I don't. It's not. It's not really direct. I mean, we're a, we're an institutional fund like like Europa. Yeah. We have multiple investors from from around the world. Um, you're seeing certain of the very very. I mean, I mean, to make an investment, you have to have a certain amount of know-how. To have a certain amount of know-how, you've got to have a certain amount of people, a certain amount of infrastructure. There are only so many investors that can actually deliver that. Well, WFC is a great example because yeah. we toured more than a handful of sovereign wealth funds through through the property when it was for sale. All of them would have loved to have bought it, um, but they didn't have the asset management capabilities that would are, are very required when you have 75 tenants. So. Daniel's ability to team up with that core core type capital with Alliance was largely predicated on Tristan's ability to asset manage. Yeah, yeah. Right. and so therefore you are, you're, those investors are coming in, but they will definitely be teaming up with someone. Um, look at our, who did who do mm -hmm. uh, who did who do the deal with the Czech Republic? Maya Bergen. Yes, yeah, so Maya Bergen. Yes, yeah, so Maya Bergen teamed up with Hoop, which is a Canadian okay. investor. And Hoop wasn't going to sit there and buy three shopping centres and secretaries in Czech Republic by themselves. So they are there, but they are typically, um, they have to have to team up. Every investment manager we, we speak to, uh, not everyone, but uh, by and large, they all have a new segregated Asian capital account right? it's, um, that they're looking to place money for. So the segregated accounts are the new trend. Um, the blind pools and closed end funds are more challenging to fundraise for, I think. and. Uh, so these segregated accounts are coming from all over the world, and, and, and Poland's on the map. I, I, I mean, it's definitely, it's definitely on the map. Um, um, yeah, and these people are looking for looking for local partners. Um, yeah, but I, think, uh, but I think generally the in, the interest from foreign sovereign wealth is increasing. Um, but they have a lot of choice. You know, like everyone's looking at a return. If you could buy you can buy in London or Paris or New York or Beijing, or you know, Warsaw has to stand up on that map. Yeah, so level looking for yeah, I think the question is, is there a product available? Is there exactly. a real core product available? I mean, like I said on, on Sardisha, I mean, it was bought by Allianz, um, um, it will be managed by ECE, and it is said to have some, some uh, I think, Chinese or at least Asian money in there, there. But how many of these products you have actually in the market? I mean, Manufacturer, the other shopping center, was bought by a German open ended fund. So, I mean, they are competing clearly against each other, these kind of uh, sovereign wealth funds on the open ended funds here. But how many products you really have? I mean, in Warsaw at the moment, on the office sector, I would say there are probably one or two buildings there which would attract interest for such kind of sovereign wealth funds. Yeah, and and when, you, when you have malls, I would say you probably have five, six, seven malls in, in, yeah. in, in total Poland which could attract such interest, but which are more or less already in fixed hands. Yeah, and logistics, they would rather go into, into a, a corporation like with uh, Seco or like with Service Pro Rogers, because this is more management intensive. You know, it's not just uh, buying a shiny property, it's really you know, having the, the, the platform available. So that's another problem for the, for the, for the Southern Gulf one. And when you look at the Czech Republic or Slovakia, I mean, is there any kind of product actually available? I mean, you had the park, which was now sold this year, yeah? And I think this was almost 50% of last year's total investment volume in the market. Last year it was 600 million in, in, in Czech Republic. Yeah, so I mean, is, is this an attractive and liquid market for such kind of sovereign wealth funds? You're asking me. I think um, you've seen uh, the Qatari sovereign wealth fund come into Poland and buy uh, the new telecom headquarters. Yeah, because it's orange. It's orange, and, and they already have France roots, more or less, or French roots. So, right. so that's the reason behind that. It, it was not a pure investment because they like the market. They know orange. What well, was also a ten-year lease and uh, didn't require asset and management. In orange, I think they are. If I'm not mistaken, they are also shareholders in orange. And pro absolutely likely, uh, given the, <laughs> the size of them. Um, nevertheless, they did buy the building. So um, we we don't see a queue of sovereign wealth money coming into the market directly, largely because uh, of the intensive asset management that it requires. We are currently selling buildings on behalf of investment managers uh, that whose money comes from sovereign wealth funds. So these sovereign wealth funds have been in the market for many, many years, um, largely the Middle Eastern sovereign wealth funds. Um, in terms of product going forward, Around this time every year, I get a little panicky about, oh gosh, what am I going to sell next year? And next year tends to come and product appears. Um, if you look at 
peak investment volumes in Poland, it was 2006. Generally, everybody's operating off of a seven-year hold uh, on average. So that takes us to 2014. We should have some liquidity uh, and some product come forward. Uh, we're certainly seeing it this year. And, uh, and every year we see the, the, the cycle um, of ownership uh, continue. So we're, we're not too worried about product. Um, but I agree that the, the super core type assets, um, you know, we'd welcome a sale mandate from Daniel on WFC again. I think yeah. he'll make some money. <laughs> um, but these, these types of assets are few and far between.